You're listening to the extended version of the Mark Who 42's Universe Podcast. Mark Who 42 Universe. Hi, I'm Nick Briggs. I'm the executive producer of Big Finish Productions and the voice of the Daleks, and you're listening to Mark Who 42. <laughs> Marco 42. I am your host, Eduardo M. Fryer. And with me today is Vicky Jacobowski. Yes, the inmates have taken over the asylum. It's Vicky and I today. <laughs> oh, you guys are in for trouble. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is about to go off. It is about to go off. Do they, do they still say off the hook or off the chain or off the rails? Off We're the rails. all of the above. <laughs> all of the above. Choose one. But yeah, to uh, speaking of choose, you have chosen wisely today because <laughs> we are talking about the recently released and possibly final <gasps> Marvel Crisp, Indiana Jones movie, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. So yeah, this is the uh, first Indiana Jones since 2008, Indiana Jones and the King of the Crystal Skull, which it was um, that long ago. Yeah. Yep, wow. it was that long ago. And um uh from what I recall, uh King Under the Crystal Skull opinions have been mixed. Uh I seem some to be the only fine. one who may have liked it. <laughs> you know what? I, I actually did. I liked it. I liked it. Um yeah, certain parts were cheesy, but you know, this is the Indiana Jones franchise um that yes kinda, and it's based uh, on that, a series yeah. of of uh shorts uh that and and serials that went on through the 20s 30s 40s in movie theaters so to yeah. me and that's why it those fit. were yeah and by the way those were freaking cheesy so you know oh yes it's oh like, no indiana jones is heads and tails above that because it was always the dun 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 and you know stay tuned yep. and come back next week for the next edition yep. you know <laughs> well batman get out of this trap and exactly what will happen when he does it Find was the out same next thing week in chapter five yep yeah, yeah. so uh just um ah oh. so what did you think of the new movie this new one yeah. yeah um you know what if it is if it is uh harrison ford's last hurrah which honestly uh um you know this is a good a good uh a good one to go out on yeah uh especially because well honestly um <laughs> Harrison is no spring chicken, and I don't, <laughs> you know, and nothing against him at all. But uh, how often I'm can just, you swing from a vine when you're in your age? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, they even they even made fun of that. Yes. They even made fun of that, having him like, you know, having him talk to Miss um, Shaw, you know, uh, where yeah. he drops, you know, he uh, he name drops. Uh, well, no, he not name drops, but yeah, he even mentions like the events of um, of you know last of uh, Temple of Doom. Yeah, you know, he's like, you know, I was made to drink the blood of Kali. You know, it's like, <laughs> so yeah, you know, this is you know, th this is like, you know, I was shot. I was, I've been shot several times once by your once by your father. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, there was even a little bit of that. There was actually a little bit of that. That was so good. In um, there was even a little bit of that in Crystal Skull. Mm -hmm. You know, you have Indy doing the swinging from the, you know, swinging from the, the top of, you know, for the rafters in the, um, in the warehouse. You know, the Area Fifty One yeah. warehouse. And you know, he goes, you know, he goes. I should have made that. You know, it's a great <laughs> little, you know, it's a great little thing. It's, it's. I mean, it's a nod to reality. The, yeah, exactly, exactly. Because I mean, here's the thing, you know, it's like, it's like, I know that, you know, 
a lot of times when they bring a franchise back, you know, people are like, yeah, I want to see this person and that person. But if enough time goes by, it's like we do have to acknowledge that they're human beings. Right. And they can't just beat themselves up for your entertainment forever. You know, we we really don't, you know, uh, Trish and I, we were joking about it, you know, that yeah. like, oh, you know, they keep going. What's the next movie going to be? You know, Indiana Jones and the search for his prescriptions. <laughs> I'm supposed to be picking up this heart medication. It was supposed to be ready by today. Why isn't it ready? You know, it's it's what I I loved the. Mm-hmm. It was still magical. It was still fantastical as it should yeah. have been. But those yes. nods to reality. But yep. I have to say that that is perhaps some of the best de aging CGI we've seen to date. I yes. just, when we got to see him, and now I do understand um, from some things I read that they scoured the hundreds of hours of um, side footage, extra footage from yep. previous Indiana Jones movies and even Star Wars movies, because of course, you know, it's all owned by Lucasfilm, and yep. were able to just create this amazing. Because I, I think that even though we've had other actors that we've had and it's been done really well, none have been as good as this. Yeah, well, we didn't. Well, I mean, for those and then, you know, for those who, uh, you know, for those who are listening, we are talking about the opening of the film. Yes. Uh, you know, has a flashback to World War II, to 1944, yeah. Yeah. where Indy was trying to infiltrate a uh, Nazi held castle, gets captured. And then we end up getting intro- we end up getting introduced to the film's villain, uh, Vol- Volger. Was that something how you pronounce like his that. name? I don't know. I think it but was something Matt like Matt Mickelson's that. yeah, Matt Mickelson's yeah. character, who like Indy goes looking for esoteric artifacts. Uh, of course, he does it, you know, for the you know, Volger does it for the glory of uh, you know, a certain the third right mustachio jerk, uh, and. You know, we we get introduced to that. We get a great sequence with uh, this battle on a train. Um, That was really well done, too. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I I think the de-aging... Okay. As far as look, the look, uh, the de-aging done for Mm -hmm. Harrison Ford was great. His first couple of lines, though, did sound like, you know, 80-something-year-old Harrison Ford. So it was kind of weird yeah. having a younger indie and then having the, you know, having the like, rattle in the voice. You know? it's not but the he was just it's punched, so we'll, we'll, give him, we'll give him a little... Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He maybe we'll give a little, him a little leeway. But, I mean, I think towards the end, towards the end of that flashback sequence, he was sounding a yes. little better, you know, so... I think that the, they the were able was a little to really rough. marry yeah. some of those, those yes. clips that they were able to take. And it's yes. the sort of thing that, you, you know... When an actor consents and and wants that done as part of the film, it can be an absolutely wonderful thing. And I appreciate the fact that this was done in conjunction with him and they didn't just do a movie without him. I'm not sure if Disney would. I'm not sure how Disney feels in general on the whole AI debate that's going on. But I love the fact that this was something that was clearly done with love, with care, and with the actor. You, you know, I just yes, talked yeah. about a win-win-win situation where it ended up really, it helped the movie, was done. I, I, I'm just, I'm I'm in awe because we've seen so much de-aging lately where they'll have people go backwards and then they come back to current day. And um, sometimes it just looks like someone put a plastic mask on over them. You know, I've seen better Mission Impossible masks. Mm-hmm. Um, and oh, I'm yeah, talking no, about the well, original series people, not the te- the movie thingies that have been on. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, also, also we have um, the other thing we have is that um, you know you you bring that up. Um, there was uh, that Scorsese film, uh, yes. The Irishman. Yes. Where yeah, they did try to de-age uh, the actors, and you know, very famously, there was you know one scene where um, where yeah the. Um, you know, I think it's De Niro or somebody, you know, is like, 
beating somebody up, but you can tell it's, it's like a really it's a it's an older person when it's yes. supposed to be somebody you know young and she's not as up. agile. Yeah. And yeah. the face may yeah. look like it. And so that's why sometimes you have to marry it on other bodies. Um, yeah. Although I understand that, except for the CGI stunts, because like most of the stunts on the train were either stunt men, which would have been done that way anyway, um, yep. or, or CGI. So some of it, Harrison Ford still did because he's a surprisingly <sighs> fit 80 year old. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, although, and I think, I think actually, I forget if it was this one or crystal skull where he really wanted to do as much of his own stunts as possible and they said with, um with, well... with the thing well with the thing well i mean his his response was he wanted to do that yeah. because he wanted it to look like a you know like an older sure. an older guy doing this stuff not you know not somebody like you really know, good 20 one. years younger uh, yeah no i totally agree and so in this one they kind of did this interesting mishmash which i think is probably why it's working so well for me because i'm i'm believing it in you know and clearly harrison ford is very involved with it Th this is not dead actors so it's not the case that we have with um you know peter cushing and and um oh, yeah, carrie was... fisher I yep. actually enjoyed those, although now when you look back at Rogue One, it looks a little quaint, but it was it was some of the best ones I'd seen at that time. And now we've leaped forward yeah, yeah, I don't... massively. Yeah, although, I mean, to be honest, like, to be honest, if you could find, you know, I'm somebody that like, okay, as far as this one, you know, as far as like the, um, the prologue, mm -hmm. you know, back in 1944, I'm fine with the de-aging. My my thing also, although you know, my thing is also that like, I I kind of you know I'm kind of of the of the opinion that like we you know as far as like um you know as far as all that's concerned, if it is possible to find somebody who looks like and who can act like a young yeah. Carrie Fisher or a young or you know or Peter Cushing circa 1977 right. or you know freaking you, you know where you don't really need to do this thing where you use AI to bring a dead actor back I would say go for it I would agree I would say I would say go for it because you do have you know you do have these you know you do have I'm sure that there are actors out there who could be you know at least a passable Oh uh, God heavens, yes. You know, it's and like, I think, I think that I even AI saw. should be I, sparingly used because yeah. it it does beg to to me. There's a definite concern of well, once we've done this, and I remember a debate that happened way back with the very first Jurassic Park when they mm -hmm. superimposed electronically the face of the child actress on top of the stunt double who was hanging from the um, HVAC. And yeah. the concern, the debate started back then about, okay, but how far do we take this? Now, I have no problem in the case of like what's happened now or even finding i like your idea of finding people who could be passable yeah. doubles and you know yeah. you work with them you coach them that's what we used to do it used to do that if an actor had to get replaced because of death or something like that you know yeah. way before we had all these um computers you found the actor who, you found someone who was passable and you trained them you know back when yeah. we trained people to do things oh, and yeah. no, you'd you be amazed at how much would work but you and i know that i think it's just oh, people yeah. have forgotten it's like oh well we'll just have a computer do it mm, i don't know to me that's actually lazy because it'll take more hours to do it on a computer than it will to train someone who's who's a good actor yeah, yeah. i'll say this i will say this um something where i found that it worked it actually worked you know trying to use a computer to bring a dead actor back mm -hmm. especially because once you saw how it was used it was like oh oh that is actually clever is uh film sky captain in the world of tomorrow yes they used they used uh, some old audio and some computer enhanced you know old footage of lawrence olivier yeah as the bad you know as the villain 
but then you know the twist spoiler alert is that the villain's been dead for years yeah. and the image that you see is like this computer you know this this like computer recording mm-hmm. it's like in that particular case i'm like actually that, that works. freaking works that freaking that, works. that was the wizard actually, of oz the man behind the curtain exact exactly exactly see like then that one that works uh yeah. you know it's just a matter of yeah just you know applying it um you know just applying it like judiciously you know like don't just right. you know, don't just be like we're gonna ai and cgi this stuff just well, like, you know, too often yeah. you see people do things that are along the lines of, um, I'm going to do this because I can. Not because it's yeah. better for the film, not because it's better for the story, not because it's better. It's, oh, I can do this, so I'm going to. And there's lots of people yeah. that I respect them very much. But just because you can doesn't mean that it's better for the film or the story or anything else. Yeah. And well, so tempering <laughs> this and tempering this technology um, let's use it yeah. for good, guys. Let's just use it for good. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, moving, moving on. You know, moving yeah. on because I mean, this is this is this is our indie five discussion. This isn't. Uh, yes. This, no. This is not. You know, this is not CGI, good or bad. No. If we revive actors using CGI. It's like that's you know. No. That, that could let's be talk a, about how could be good a, yeah. Indiana Jones was. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's great that after the prologue, you know, one. If I have any issues with the prologue, since this was distributed by Disney, mm-hmm. you know, we do we we don't have one of the hallmarks of the Indiana Jones series, which was the um, you know, they were distributed by Paramount. So we'd have a thing where yeah. it's the Paramount logo and it yeah. solves into the scene. So like for example, you know, the Paramount logo is a mountain and then you know it would dissolve into the scene and, and like it would, it would yeah. turn into a mountain in the jungle or in the case of Crystal Skull, a uh mound that a CGI gopher came out of. But you know that's not <laughs> you know not I know there. I know. It was um, it was kind of interesting seeing the Disney one hundred logo and it's not like yeah. it didn't fit. It just it was like, oh but that's different. Yeah, well, I mean, I would have, I wouldn't, I, I it would have been nice if like the Disney 100 logo dissolved and like you know maybe the top of the castle. Yes, I was just know, thinking was the, that like, that would have been great. Like, that would have been, been great. So I mean, it's, oh yeah, 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 and that would have kind of kept kept the you know the feel that, that we're that used feel. to. But yes. of course, you know, of course, this is you know, I mean, this this wasn't directed by Spielberg. This was James. Uh, Ma- Mangold? Something like yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Um, you know, this was this was his baby, although he is, you know, he did keep the spirit of yes. films. This wasn't, you know, this wasn't somebody who uh, you know, came in and was like, all right, no. all right, this is gonna make this cool. You know, he's yeah, just like, he no, definitely... they have a formula, they have beats. Yeah. Yes. And I there were a few that. things, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I know that. After the, uh, but yeah, after the prologue, we do get um, the present day indie. Well, present, quote unquote, I because know. it's 19... it's 1969. Yeah. Yes, because it's the yeah. it's the, the, the um, astronauts have returned um, um, yeah. from the moon, and they're having their nope. tape parade, which I thought was yeah. so funny and appropriate. Uh, oh yeah, no, and and you know, and then of course we get you know we get indie. Uh, yep. tapping into his, um, you know, tapping into his crotchety old man uh, routine. Know. You know, it's ten o'clock in the morning. It's moon day, man. What's moon day? I know. It was so good. Well, he was, although you know, you know, I do cranky old guy. Oh yeah, and and honestly, I um, I do have to agree with him because it's like eight o'clock, eight o'clock in the morning, guys. It's like, yep. yes, we're celebrating, but come on, man. People have work. People, you know, you know, I mean, eight o'clock in the morning, dude, you know, get, get, get you know, give a little bit of leeway here. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and then, of course, uh, you know, one thing, though, I mean, I will say one thing. Um, when we get Indy getting up from having just slept in the chair all night, you know, we yeah. get like, you know, we get a look at him just just in his you know in his boxers it's interesting how he looks like an old man yes although a very fit old man 
yeah, yeah, very fit. Like, oh yeah, no, 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 no. That that is not in doubt. The fact that he looks like like this is not you know, yeah, you know, it's like this is a guy. The India I think is supposed to be maybe a couple of years younger than Harrison Ford is in reality, but you know, yeah, this is a seventy something, almost eighty year old guy. Mm-hmm. He is going. He is not going. You know, this is not going to. This is not uh, Daniel Craig coming out of the water in Casino Royale. This is not, you know, this isn't Jason Momoa under the waterfall in Aquaman. You know, he is, this isn't uh, Superman after he just rose from the grave in Justice League. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, no, it's not, it's not just proud of it. It's, it's, you know, sorry, children. Reality. Yes. You know, guess what? We actually all get old, even, even, even. Well, we get, well, we get old. Some of the muscles kind of, you know, lose their definition. It's, you know, not. You know, it's not not everybody can be um what's the name of that bodybuilder, you know, who was like an older guy, but like I still have muscles. What is it, Jack Lane or something? I don't know. Yes, Jack Lane. Jack Lane, yeah. Can't all be Jack Lane. You know what I mean? Good for you, sir. But it's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> sometimes you get older and some of that stuff just goes bye bye. It just it it happens. It's unfortunate. Uh, you know, you, if you're lucky, you hold on to it for a long time. But if not, you know, it's unfortunately Father Time is like, I'm going to take that. 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 You know, oh, hey, those legs you used to be a marathon runner. Not anymore. It's oh, like, you know that back until that, he you... gets fully upright and he's yeah. standing, you, you know, yeah. he, he reminds you more of Carl from Up than Indiana yeah. Jones. And then when he gets a little bit more upright and, and he's moving around, you can see yep. he still has, he's still a little spry, but he's, yep. he's not the 30, 40, 50, 60 something year no. old he's been in previous movies. And nope. so you look at it and you go, wow, okay. And I like it because it juxtaposes with what we just saw. Yep. That whole <laughs> young, youthful, and now here he is today and he's struggling understandable yep oh yeah yeah and you know and we and it's like and also there is a scene that um basically i i felt i i sympathized with indy so much and that's when he's in the classroom oh and you have like these you know and you have like these 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 kids basically like you know not really you know not, just not not showing the effort and it's like no. i'm just like i'm getting and like when he talks about you know did anybody read what was in the text yes i have sat in on classes taught by my dad where yeah. that has happened where like he says is anybody reading the book and then with the side of course the only difference is uh if it was my dad he would have basically run like you know he would have <laughs> given them the riot act and he would have said this is going to be on the test. Yeah. Like, you have to read, like, you, I am not going to tell you, I'm not your mother, I'm not going to tell you to read the text, but it will be on the test, and if you haven't read it, you are going to die. It's like, he would have basically, you know, that would have, if Indy was my dad, he would have said that. He would have been like, you know, this is going to be on your final. This is going to be on your final, so you got to read it. But, you know, yeah, it's just that, that one, I sympathized with him, and I was just like, oh, yeah uh, and yeah it's and it seems like he's in uh you know he's he's in a community college or something you know he's having to yes, deal it's with a much smaller uh, smaller deal than he's used to yeah and well also you know uh, the students are not as uh what's what's the invested? word we think interested, invested, interested. <laughs> yeah yeah they they probably although they props to helena shaw for for coming in and uh yes. livening things up and actually we will on that note uh we do have to go for a commercial break unfortunately okay. but you know what we will come back okay we, we come back we are going to keep talking yes. about indiana jones and the dial of destiny we're going to get more into the plot we're going to get into helena shaw Yep. We're also going to we're going to get into uh you know some returning favorite characters. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get into the uh, absence of a certain character. Mm. Uh and yeah, you will Simpson fans 
you will know why I am cutting to commercial with this quote. I must go now. My planet, my planet needs me. <laughs> so yeah, more on that when we come back here on Subspace Radio. Don't, Don't go, go away. away. Don't go away. We'll, we'll be back, back with more Mark Who Forty Two after this. <laughs> The Pull Bag is GCRN's comic book review and discussion-based podcast. Join me, TFG and Mike, and the rest of the GCRN crew as we discuss the comics we are reading right now. Inside The Pull Bag, you'll also find the origins of how guests got into or out of reading comics, After Dark discussions, and so much more. You can find The Pull Bag every Wednesday, which is New Comic Book Day, only on geekcastradio.com and on anywhere you consume your podcasts. Make your greatest game into comics and jump into the pull bag today. You are listening to Mark Who 42's Universe. Welcome back. Welcome back to Mark Who 42, where we're discussing Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. So now, did you get here naturally or did you use the Dial of Destiny? <laughs> Uh, be honest. Be honest. Uh, I, I might have the... needed some help. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did uh, did you take advantage of continental drift, Vicky? I did try you really managed... hard to plan it just right. Yeah, there you go. See, yep, got can't can't forget that continental drift. That's that's important. I know that yeah. was so good. Yeah. You know, they think yeah. they've won, and no, they haven't. Yep, on that drift. Yeah, I've actually, I've actually read, I've actually read like articles that you know, and things that say that yeah, time travel. You know, you have to do a little bit of time and space travel because yeah, yeah, you know, if you you know you you travel back in time and then it's like oh, the Earth's not there or you know right. you're you're a few you know you're you're maybe a, a few yards away from where you're supposed to be you know and you accidentally. Time travel into a wall, which I think it's was one actually of the things some... that people don't always yeah. think about is that you've yep. got everything's moving in the galaxy, yep. everything's moving on this planet. Nothing has been stationary pretty much since the original formation, since the original blue dot began and grew and grew and grew into the planet we now attend. It just Everything has changed. Everything shifts. Everything becomes something different. So wouldn't it make sense if you're going to do time travel, you've got to take into account all these different little what ifs, which is why it's such a difficult concept. It's a great concept. I love the concept, but I also recognize that, you know, it has to be timey-wimey for it to work because nothing's a straight line. Nothing is, is... Where I'm standing right now, if I were to go back 50 years, would not be where I'm standing right now. Yep. Yep. But um, uh, sp- but uh, speaking of going back, I'm going to use this yeah. as a segue. Uh, you know, there is, you know, one of the one of the things that, you know, was really good about Dial of Destiny is we, you know, we did have new characters like we did have Helena mm-hmm. Shaw. And her, very nice. Her, um, yeah, and her boy Wonder. <laughs> I which, know, that was so good. You got to wonder how many things that kid pickpocketed that you know we never saw. Probably a and, lot more than we know. Yep. And then you know when he when he picked the pocket of that preppy kid, mm-hmm. you know who was being all for, it's like honestly I was just like yeah you deserve it you little. I know. Little. I know. Oh, yeah. You want to play those games? Well, guess what you're yeah, going to get. Okay. Home. Yeah. Yeah. Guess what you're yeah. going to get. You're going to get. You know, <laughs> play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Um, so, <laughs> but yeah, we did have a uh, a couple of returning favorites. Yep. We did have, um, you know, one person that we did have making a comeback, Sala, which mm-hmm. it was so it was so nice to have him one more time. Yes. And. I did like because I mean yeah we knew that he was coming because you know if you you remember the um, the the previews it did show uh, Sala you know yes. doing the give him hell Indiana Jones um, you know it it's like I did uh, you know it was nice seeing him and I liked the fact 
that he showed up again at the end. Yes. That, you know, we, I felt like we, we needed know, a little closure for him too. Yeah. I mean, you know, okay. It's, it's closure in the sense that, you know, yeah, he, uh, you know, I mean, it's not, you know, total closure. It's not like, you know, Sala passes away and, you know, right. there's uh, India at his bedside. No, he just, he shows up at the end. Uh, I do like that he's with his, uh, with Teddy, you know, the yeah. the boy wonder, you know, the boy wonder sidekick to Helena. I do like that he's with Teddy and, you know, his grandkids. And as he walks out of Indy's apartment, he's doing a British tar is a fighting soldier, soldier as a mountain. It's like, that was, you know, it's like, yep, dude, if that's the last thing I gotta, I, you know, if that's the last we see of Sala, I'm just like, you know what? It, that's a good way to walk. That's a good way for Sala to walk off into the sunset. Uh, and yeah, Marion is back. Marion yes. did come back. It was a little bit of a cameo. Um, but it was a perfect cameo. It was. And you know what? It did It did go. One of the things the story does is it does, you know, it is part of the story. You know, because one yes. of the things is Indy in this, you know, this isn't, you know, he's a little bit more grouchy. And part of it is beginning of the film. His marriage yeah. is on the rocks. His marriage is yeah. on the rocks. We later find out it is because of Mutt. Of course, it's because Mutt, of Mutt. Mutt. Everything's because yeah. of Mutt. Mutt Williams, you know, yeah, Mutt. Will, you know, Mutt Williams, played by Shia LaBeouf, is the reason why in these marriages collapsing, but not, yeah. you know, but not, you know, not not because of anything. Well, it's because of what he did. In this case, it's deciding to sign up to go fight in Vietnam. And unfortunately, uh, off screen, he is killed in combat. And yeah. that just kind of shatters, you know, his parents. Um, that is, you know, I, I made the joke before the break. You know, I did the, you know, the reference to Itchy and Scratchy and Poochie. You know, Poochie, I must go now. My planet needs me. Poochie died on the way to back to his home planet. That just, it feels like, yeah, Mutt got Poochie. Yeah. Not Pucci. It's like, it's like, yeah, we, you know, we couldn't, you know, Shia LaBeouf uh, either wasn't invited back or didn't want to come back, you know, or little column A, little column B. And they were just like, okay, we're going to kill him off. And, you know, Indy's going to be, you know, in a, uh, in a bad place because of it. Um, yeah. I'm going to do a hot take here. As you know, I honestly never had a lot of issues with the character um mm -hmm. you know of M williams i thought you know was a character that you know you could do some interesting stuff you know especially yes. if, you know the idea that here indy has a son but he's not a chip off the old block mm -hmm. you know i thought there was some stuff there and you know if shia wasn't around you know i mean i'm sure you probably could still do the thing where he's fighting in vietnam um, you know, I am glad, spoiler alert, at the end, it looks like Indy and Marion are reconciling. Yes. Uh, I do love the beautiful nod to that scene from Raiders. It's like, oh, where does it Yes. Oh, oh here God, and I here, can't. you know. Yeah, it was just, it was beautiful. Um, I am so glad, you know, I'm glad that there was... At least, you know, I'm glad that she did get a chance to, you know, yes. I wish Marion was in more of the film. Uh, I have seen articles that say that Karen Allen did wish it to, and that apparently if, you know, things had actually, you know, worked out and Shia came back, that, you know, there would have been more. Or I think, I, I think like, I think if Spielberg had been more of a participant in this film, that, yeah, we would have had uh, more for Marion to do. But at least she came back. At least it ends with the two of them together. Yes. Honestly, it's like, yeah, no, I, I, you know, that, that it's like, to me, it's like, I would not want in these store, like if this is the last hurrah for Indiana Jones, I would not want it to end with Indy, him, you know, him and being Marianne alone. Not. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, come on. They, they, yeah, no, no, it's, they were put together at the end of Crystal Skull. And it's like, if we have to have one last yes. adventure, they have to end They together. have to end together. Oh, yeah. But, um, you know, and also just continuing 
with the thought, you know, the thought of, you know, Shia LaBeouf, you know, and he's, you know, Indy's son, but he's not a chip off the old block. He's not an explorer. Mm -hmm. We do get, you know, we get the character. We get Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character of Helena Shaw, yes. who she is interesting. Like, I know that Trish didn't like her at, you know, didn't, you know, Trish didn't really like her until the end. And yeah, my, mm. my brother-in-law didn't like her until she was her, you know, uh, change of heart not quite heel turn but change of heart I you know yeah. I actually liked her and to me if they do decide to do some sort of spin-off like you know have her as you know Indy's quote-unquote successor I think that there's some meat there that you well, can work it's with it's because she's so Indiana Jones is very much um, a true believer. These pieces belong in museums. They deserve the history needs to be known by people. And she's more about the quick buck, which kind of becomes understandable as you understand her life. And, and she sees these objects that were a obsession of her father's in Indiana Jones. And so it makes sense that for her, it's all, what is it in, what's in it for me? And yeah. that's an actually very, more normal, you know, most people don't tend to be all altruistic or all bad, unlike the Nazis. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> but we'll get to them later. But um, <laughs> Helena was a complex character. She was all of the above. And for her, yeah. I could picture selling the piece of the dial because it, it was very obvious. She was always conflicted. She wanted to put the whole thing together. And she wanted to find all, you know, find out what it really is and find out what it will really do. It obviously interested her. But at the same time, it's like, okay, this is what destroyed my father. So I want to sell it and make something of it because this has negative connotations for me. And she's clearly been on her own. It's kind of why I think she's taking Teddy under her wings because she sees herself in Teddy. And so, you know, they make very good foils to Harrison Ford, because if they, if, if Indiana Jones and Helena had the same goals, I don't think it'd nearly be as interesting. No, and it's, you know, and it's interesting because she is, in many ways, she is um, Indy's equal. Yes. As far as, as far as the, um, you know, as far as like the, the, um, you know, she's as equal in the sense that, um, you know, in the sense that she is the, um, you know, she knows her stuff. Yes. She knows, she her knows stuff. history she knows just like him, backwards and forwards. Yes. Yep. Um, she is, you know, yeah. She knows she knows her stuff, she knows her history. Yeah. Where she, you know, where she's different is um yeah, she doesn't have his uh, I think the closest word I can use is nobility. Yeah. Their motivations are very different. She wants to know everything like he does. She wants to know all the secrets of the universe like he does. But then she wants to exploit it where he wants to then use it to share history with the universe and make everyone want to um, enjoy in it too. And it, it's very interesting that someone who can have that much love of history and that much yeah. disdain of historical objects as as uh, um, monetizing them only, it's a fascinating um, opposite side of the coin of Indiana Jones. But that's yeah. what makes oh, her yeah. so interesting because she is oh, she's yeah. different. She's 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 not all good. She's not all bad. She's certainly not um, trying to bring the Third Reich back. Um, oh, yeah. Well, no, that that I think that you know with Vulgar that is. That I think is one of the interesting things on his character is yes. the fact that um, he did, you know, he did want to bring the Third Reich back. But it's interesting because he wasn't interested in helping Hitler. No, he wanted it for himself. 
Yeah, well, he's well. His whole thing. It's interesting because he believes in Hitler's vision, but he's like, okay, but you know, you're. But that man. Yeah. Yeah, you've gone. Yeah, it's like you've kind of lost it. You know, you've kind of lost it. We really should. You know, let's. Yeah. Yeah, that's. He thinks he can make it better. He can do it better. He is smarter. Yeah. No, it's. Yeah, well, it's well, you know, either him in charge or at least somebody in charge who's not cuckoo for cocoa puffs, right? And it's but like, okay, it just, yeah, it's uh, no big surprise that when someone has been the loser, if they want the opportunity yeah. to go back in time, either literally or figuratively, to correct things. Yep. Um, yeah. It's always amazing how many times you have it where they think that they can prevent the mistakes that happened or they can do it better. Or, yep. you know, it's it's not that they thought someone was awful and let's get rid of this this awful person or or situation. It's no, no, no. If they're going to conquer the world, they got to do it my way because I know what I'm doing. Really? How about yeah. we just not conquer the world? You know, am I asking too much? Probably. <laughs> yeah, I think you're asking too much. Uh... I know. I know. It's just as soon as someone gets a little bit of power, they want more. And unfortunately, that's not unrealistic at all. Yeah. Well, you know, absolute power corrupts that whole thing. You know, it's yep. um, very true. Yeah. Oh, and then what, you know, as we're on, you know, while well, we keep on the uh, the new character, the new uh -huh. character train. Um, what did you think? OK, well, first of all, uh, Volger had his little henchman. Uh, oh, I gotta my say, gosh. The, the chief, the chief henchman. I'm sorry, but I my nickname for him was Evil Owen Wilson. Oh God, I'm never gonna unsee that now. <laughs> but you're so right. I see that he now. Looked, yeah, because he looked like an evil. You know, it's like it's like this is Earth Three Owen Wilson. Oh, I mean, no. honestly, I was. You're right, because he's got that weird buzz cut. Yeah. And and the, the oh wow okay well now that's gonna stick with me. But you're right. He's <laughs> he's young and power hungry, and clearly a neo Nazi, and yep. um, you know, clearly assumes that you know he'll, uh, as they always assume, if if you help the bad guy, then you can you know uh, achieve greatness yourself because you're going to ride his yep. coattails. Basically, he just yep. becomes fodder when push comes to shove because that's what always happens to the henchmen. You know, they, yep. they make you think that you're important, but guess what you're not? Yeah. And that no, seven and foot it's... two guy. Oh, oh my geez. Lord. I mean, that just real guy. You know, he's really yep. big. And, yep. um, you know, when he picks you know people what? up and just throws them over his shoulder, you go, yeah. I oh, yeah. That. Yeah. And you know what? It's I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, it's I wouldn't be surprised if he is the uh, spiritual reincarnation of Pat Roach. It's like, yeah, the late great Pat Roach, who fought Indiana Jones in two of the original trilogy. Um, you know, he also showed up, you know, in like a really, uh, really brief cameo in Last Crusade. But uh, yeah, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this guy is, you know, if somebody, you know, if they did get him because they're like, oh, this is going to be, you know, hey, we're going to, yes. you know, anybody remember when they would hire Pat Roach? Yes. Let's do this too. You know, it's like, yeah, it's it's Pat Roach all over again. And honestly, I'm just like, no, I'm good. And yep. the fact that he got his comeuppance because that was um, nice. you know, because yeah, Teddy locked him with the handcuff. That was so uh, nicely although, done. Although, man, it is a little I do have to say that's not my favorite that would not be my favorite way to go out. Um yeah. Drowning while, you know. while attached to an iron gate. Nope. Yeah, nope. no. Doesn't no, sound like fun. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Although, but I'm I don't so know, glad maybe... that that Teddy was such a um, quick thinker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, it Even, just, you he know, had to be to survive. Yeah. No. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, Teddy. Teddy's a great character in the sense that yeah, he was a quick thinker. Quick, you know, and really just yeah. I mean, just really yeah that is i would enjoy uh, seeing yeah. future adventures of helena and and teddy because oh, yeah, that no, could be fun 
because while well, they've got to still survive, you know, at least yep. some of what she does will be for good, but then some of it will be to make a buck. But, um, <laughs> yep. but, you know, that would be so much fun to watch because they're fun characters. They're, oh, they're, yeah. they're interesting. They're smart. They're, well, I don't know. I just, I really enjoyed it. Oh yeah. I also think that, um, what would be interesting is to see, um, Betty and Helena, you know, like it would be interesting, Helena trying to, you know, maybe having learned something at, you know, Indy's feet and then right. trying to be like, you know, trying to be like, okay, I'm going to, you know, all right, I'm going to, to try it Indy's way. You know, trying to be like, oh, you know, let me, let me try fun. to do it. You know, you know, and then just also trying to deal with the fact that, yeah, she's doing it. She's trying to do it, you know, Indiana Jones's way. But, you know, there is the yes. thing that, you know, you do have, she does have so many years of having done it the other way that, you know, it She'll might not be that easy. She'll occasionally slip back up. <laughs> yeah, slip back up or at least, at least run into somebody who, you know. An old, what? Did she uh, piss off in a past life? What? Yeah, yeah, she would yeah somebody she pissed off. Or at least somebody who, you know, wants, you know, right. is more interested in classic Helena than in the Helena who now, you know, is a little bit more understanding of her yes. father and her godfather's, you know, work. It's like, yeah, no, I need the Helena who's okay with, you know, breaking <laughs> into this. It's like, no, I don't do that anymore. Okay, well, well that's not going to work for me, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, we, you know, it would be interesting to see that. I've actually said, you know, this is something when, you know, when word comes in that uh, King, uh, that uh, Dial of Destiny is supposed to be the last hurrah. Yeah. And then after after last year with uh, a certain trippy fantasy film, you know, uh, everything everywhere all at once. I know that a lot of people were saying, hey, you know, let's get Short Round back, you know, because that actor has, now has a, uh, yes. a resurgence. And to me, I'm like, you know, what would be interesting is, yeah, pull the trigger, give Short Round like a spinoff, maybe even have him and Helena. And, you know, ah, you have, you know, and think about it this way, you'll have Short Round, you know, Short Round is, of course, the one who, um, you know, he's kind of, he's learned at Indy's feet. Right. And he is very much, you know, like the son Indy never had. Uh, right. Sorry, Mutt. You know, sorry, Mutt. It's true, you know. Uh, you know, he's like the, you know, he is in many ways the son that, you know, Indiana Jones should have had. You know, you have short round. And then you have Helena, who's trying to learn how to do it, you know. Yes. How to do things a little more... Um, what's the word we're going for, you know, a little bit more on the straight and narrow. That would be interesting, you know, having the two of them together and, you know, and, you know, it would be even, hell, I would even say, you know, if it was me, I would have um, Indy, I would have Indy at least have a little cameo to send it's everybody on their way. Just a little, because come on, you know, you got to have a Patsy on the have that. moment. Got to have that. I would actually have a uh, a moment where, you know, short round is talking to Indy and, you know, they say something like, Indy, I haven't seen you since your wedding. <laughs> and, you know, Indy just going like, yeah, that was a good one. You know, that kind of thing, you know, just Aww. indicating that because I know that I think that they were thinking of giving John Reese davies and a couple of other characters like a cameo at, at the, the wedding. wedding yeah. But it was like, yeah, but it was like, oh, but they didn't want to have it be this weird series of of yeah. cameos. Just well, I think also and... John Reese davies wanted, you know, thought the fans would want more of Sala than yes. just, you know. And I would agree. I can't flip Sala, you know. And I got to admit, yeah, I, I, yeah, I do feel that one. Uh, I would like Sala to be more than just, you know. Hey kids, look at Sala. You know, yes, um, you, yeah, you know sometimes you you can fit in those little cameos that like that, but yep. it kind of depends on it. Had been too many years, so to just suddenly have all these characters appear at the wedding and that's yep. it would just be yep. too little. Yep, exactly. It had been like so many years between three and four. 
Exactly. Although I did hear, I don't know if it was, uh, if this is for real or not, but I did hear there was going to be a joke um, talking about Willie Scott, like, oh, what happened to Willie Scott? And, uh, you know, Indy was going to indicate that she just married some big shot Hollywood director. Oh, that would have been funny. Well, that would have been funny. But yeah, you know, it's, it was you, good you seeing kind of would characters. like to see yeah. some of this continue, but I also... Oh, yeah. I'm not going to lie. If if this is it, that's okay. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. It's, you know, it, it, it is a good way to go out on. Mm-hmm. Definitely. You know, it's a good way to go out on, uh, you know, the t- and, and I on it. And it's interesting. I didn't mind the time travel at the end. No. Where they actually time I think it was back it, to, it fit. to the Battle of Syracuse. Yeah. I got to say, when Indy's like, leave me here, you know, I'm going to stay here. I was just like, yeah. oh, no, this is not where it's ending. No, no, no. you are not be. ending the saga with Indy living the rest of his life as Archimedes' roommate. No. No, it just felt wrong. No, no, that would have felt wrong. So when Helena punched him out and then, you know, we have yes. Indy waking up in modern day, I'm just like, yes, yes, this, this yes. is, yeah, no, yeah, this is how it has to end. Forget this. No, we are not going to have Indy. Basically, you know, we're not going to have an ending where, like, you know, somebody discovers uh, a thing of, you know, uh, a carving of Archimedes and a guy that looks like Indy. No. Right. That no. would have been too off. Yeah, that would have been too off. That's not a good ending, you know. An ending where he and Marion are reunited and, you know, Indy yanks the hat from where it's drying on the on the line. That's, that was that's perfect. the ending. Yeah, that was perfect. Yeah, that was perfect. Yes. You know. Just like, you know, just like the fact that, yeah, when the, you know, I, you know, we still got to love the, uh, in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, where the hat blows off and then, you know, Mutt picks it up, but then Indy like yanks it. It's like, no, no, not yet. No, you haven't deserved this. You haven't deserved this. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Uh -uh. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. This is not how it's ending. Uh Uh-uh. No. No, no, no. We're not going to have Shia LaBeouf with the indie hat on. Sorry. Nope, he didn't work. Sorry. Yep, yep. And if anything, if Helena Shaw does her own adventures, she needs her own hat. She needs her own hat. If Short Round has his own adventures, he needs his own hat. I think that hat, that's Harrison's. And that should be Harrison's. That should rightly be Harrison's. Yeah, nobody else should wear the hat. If they you can have put the hat else... on the wall as a sign of reference and, and yep. as a as a re- reminder that this is something as Indiana Jones is. But yep. Indiana Jones wears the hat, nobody else. Yes. Yes. And on that note, actually, we are going to keep going with more assorted uh, geeky talk. Maybe we'll maybe we'll travel back to Syracuse. Maybe we won't, you know. <laughs> I'll tell you this, we won't go serve in Vietnam and get killed off off screen. Definitely no, we won't. Not. No, we won't. Don't go away. Don't go away. We'll, we'll be, be back, back with more Mark Who 42 after this. Hello, geeks and geekettes. I'm Steve Megatron, and if you're looking for a podcast that covers a vast array of geeky topics, then check out Altered Geek. Altered Geek covers superheroes, Star Trek, pop culture, comics, film, television, animation, gaming, tech, and more. So check out Altered Geek and get altered, get geeky with the Altered Geeks every Friday on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, SoundCloud, Blog Talk Radio, and the GeekCast Radio Network. Hey, if you're listening to the sound of my voice, you did not listen to this on Subspace Radio. You're listening to this elsewhere on the internets and whatnot. So, hey, you know, it's still a Dorn on Fryer. I'm still with Vicky Jacobowski. We're still talking Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. <laughs> not to be confused with Indiana Jones and the Why Is He Not Watching TV? What is all this, what is all this star, star tracking? What's, what's with the ears? <laughs> what's with the ears? That lady's, yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind the lady running communications, but that that skirt is way too smart. <laughs> young lady, your young lady, does your mom let you walk out of the house looking like that? <laughs> I'm eighteen, Doctor Jones. Oh. Yeah, when I was eighteen, I was 
when I was 18, doctor, when I was 18, young lady, I was fighting in World War I. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, you're that old? Out. <laughs> there you go. If we get an Indiana Jones 6, Indiana Jones, grumpy old man. Mm. Wow. <laughs> this is too spicy. <laughs> this is too spicy. Why do I make things spicy? This is too spicy. <laughs> oh, we have all these other okay. characters we haven't even touched on yet. Oh God, yes, yeah, actually, yes, yes, we have, we have. Uh, oh, geez, you're right. Uh, one, one, okay, one person I do want to touch on is um, I do want to touch on Mason, who was this, um, this. What what were those? What like I know that okay, vulgar. Um, it's revealed that he is kind of working for this um, this kind of you know he was kind of a uh, Operation Paperclip kind of guy. Yes, like you know he got scooped up scooped up by the Allies after the war. What and, a lot of people uh, don't realize is that it's a true story that many Nazi scientists, not all who were actually Nazis, they were just forced to work by the Nazis, but some of them were actually Nazis, which is what this yeah. character is. Um, after yeah, World no, War is. II, basically they were offered immunity if they would come and work for what now we call NASA and the space program. And thanks to them, we were yep. able to get the H-bomb, the nuclear bomb, and rocket ships to take us to the moon and the space station and elsewhere. Um, a lot of people don't know that's a true story. And there's you know, some who were good, some who uh, a complaint that I've heard over the years uh, that there are some really shady people who were able to live out their lives in happiness because they did this deal with the U.S. government. Yeah. Um, and then we, we, we have this these lovely, horrible characters who their whole hope is to, you know, bring around um, an improved Third Reich. But then we have Mason, who is alluded to that she's in the CIA. She's yeah. one of his she's, handlers. Yep. Although, I mean, I kind of feel, I just kind of feel like Mason was, well, quite frankly, wasted. I mean, yeah, it's like, he's a really she's good character. To, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's here we have a, an African-American woman, you know, in a position, in a position in, in intelligence. And, it's like, really, I mean, I kind of get the, idea, you know, like, for example, you know, we have, uh, we have Vulgar's, you know, we have evil Owen Wilson, we have Earth 3 Owen Wilson, <laughs> and it is, it is, um, it is implied that he's not an agent, he's just, he's somebody that Vulgar had, you know, he's Vulgar's houseboy, right. uh, <laughs> but it's like, you know, like when they go to, to track down uh, Jones and Shaw. You know, she goes, where are you? Why are you going? You're not even an uh -huh. agent. Like, she couldn't just tell him, no, you're not going. Right. Like, we couldn't just have her saying, you're not, you know, you're not going on this. You're not a, you know, you're not an agent. You're not going. Right. Uh, you know, she just instead, you know, she just like, it's like she, she, she notes this, but then doesn't do anything about it. And. To me, it's like, yeah, she just got so wasted. And it's like, and then, yeah, she does, you know, the, the, the one time that we have her, you know, trying to kind of put a, uh, yes. a stop to this, she gets killed. You know, vulgar. And is, so you know, unceremoniously. I mean, just bam, she's, she's, yeah. she's shot. That's it. She's yep. done. Yep. And I think you're even, like, oh. And I think it's like, I heard tale that it was going to be worse. That like, oh. not only was she going to get killed. But indicators are that um, they probably would have, you know, Vulgar and his henchmen would have uh, probably been, you know, they probably would have, like, I don't know, twisted the knife, you right. know, as she died. Because, like, it was something where there was, like, some dialogue or something that ended up on the cutting room floor. Um, and to me, I'm just like, oh. That's, yeah, that is just, you know, uh, yeah. if something had to get deleted, I'm glad it was because I wouldn't want, um, yeah, I wouldn't want. Um, no, as it was the senseless killing. And actually, you know, if I think about it, that's kind of a, a string through this story is that yeah. 
you know, Voller and his men are all census killers. Yeah. Uh, no question. I mean, and, and it fits the character completely. But the oh, fact yeah. that uh, it they're so quick to kill the secretary and, and you know everyone at the school, they're quick to kill yeah. people. They don't have a problem killing this person. I mean, it's like they don't even blink. They're so boom, shot, bam, done. I, I'm like, how can you be that callous? But that's what those characters are. And I think it's a thread that runs through this that they are callous, they are calculating, their motivations are very specific, and they're very, um, um, they got blinders on to anything else. So if they kill a few people, who cares? And I agree with you. Why didn't they just keep her off the plane? Why did no, they just, you know ever let her on? And, you, you know, it just no, knocked or her something out or like something. Right. Or something or like, for example, um, when, you know, Volger and his men kill the secretary. Yeah. And, you know, kill that professor. Why didn't she, you know, why wasn't she like, OK, no, this mission's over. This mission's over. These, this she is unacceptable. should have been. But she was yeah. like, you know, she, was just, she, she you makes know, a it, comment, but she yeah. doesn't put a stop to it. Yeah, like she should have just said, okay, Which is that's a it. comment about least... the CIA in this question then. Yeah, and it's like, it's one of those things where, I mean, she should have at least taken, uh, you know, yeah. Mr. Mustache and just been like, okay, get out. Right. Get out. But you're, instead, you know, you're going back she, to the van, you know. She was toting the party line and saying, okay, well, sometimes we have to do bad things. And then she was at the receiving end of it. I mean, none of yeah. that is good. None of that is you know, ends justifies yeah. the means BS, um, which is why it just, there is no question that, you know, the bad guys are absolutely bad. And I think that's one of the things that works in Indiana Jones, because of course, it's also from the time period when fascist was coming of age and the Nazism. And so in the 30s and 40s, when you were dealing with that, it makes yep. perfect sense. And I think it worked really well in Indiana Jones movies that you have the Nazis involved, the concept of the Nazis involved, because yeah. there, uh, there is no redeeming value. There is no you, yeah, you no, can't there's... come back from that and say, well, there's a good reason I did it this way. No, there's not. It's like, no. No. Yeah. Okay. The reason, yeah, the reason is, is that you are an evil scumbag. There you go. Yes. That's the reason. Boom. That's it. Okay. Boom. We're done. Conversation over. Yeah. It, and yeah, I, I, no, I've heard over the years that people are like, well, you know, it's just too easy with Nazis. It's like, yes, but the fact that we still have neo-Nazis proves the fact that we have not proven the fact that we have to keep talking about the Nazis and we have to keep showing just how bad they are because they haven't gotten any better. Yeah, um, well, and then also, I mean, also it's like, uh, you know, I would be hard pressed. I would be hard pressed to figure out because like Kingdom of the Crystal Skull we did have, um, you know, we had um, the Russians, right? And it is era appropriate. Like I know that yes. I know that because I heard Christmas... that they talked about doing Nazis, but because it was the height of the Cold War, it made far more yeah, sense that for wouldn't... the Russians. And I yeah, agree exactly because the yeah. neo Nazi well, movement really hadn't taken a lot of hold yet at that point. It was still the the Russians. So I get it. Yep. Yeah, no, I get it too. I mean, I get it too. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I get it too, and I, I find myself in agreement. It's like, yeah, you know, yeah, it would have been, you know, the Russians make sense. This one, I think it also makes sense, and mm -hmm. yep. you kind of have this thing of like, okay, if you weren't going to use the Nazis, who would you have used? Because it's like I right. can't think of anybody that would have made sense. Um, I also got to say that the, you know, going back to the flashback, mm -hmm. I like the fact that we had the flashback because it's with the uh, spinoff material. Because, mm -hmm. you know, there's been a bunch of, of spinoff material featuring Indiana Jones. Yeah. I know that the spinoff material does indicate that he was active in the war. And I know that um, I believe there yeah. is a line that one of the lines in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is about the fact that Indy was active in the war. Yeah. 
you know, it was somebody did say, you know, and and I think he, uh, I think he's actually, I think his um, his rank is Colonel because I think somebody goes, somebody says Colonel Jones. So it's cool that we actually got to see a little bit of that. Yeah, Toby Jones is adorable. An, a, a great character, perfect. A little nervous. Um, yep. Then becomes obsessive. He does it very well. He's a very good actor. And you absolutely believe his character through through his changes and growths and and yep. and you totally see that. Um, and it makes sense because Indiana Jones is an odd college professor. Most professors and people who deal with antiquities are not as as flexible as Indiana Jones. Well, an action hero. -y. <laughs> right. So it's it's a good companion to indiana jones that the person he's with is not going to be um the same as him yeah i wouldn't expect that no no definitely not um the other well the other companion because i mean we do have we do have multiples in this in this that is film. True. uh you know we do have uh we do have Antonio Banderas as oh, yeah. Ronaldo. Um, I have to tell you, when you first saw I, I recognized the voice before I recognized the face. And I had to stare for a second and I'm like, oh my God, I know who that is. <laughs> yep. It was oh, beautifully yeah. the way that he did it, that, you know, again, yeah. uh, you didn't have this huge name that just was randomly in there. He was perfect in the part. He also played a grouchy old man. <laughs> yeah, although, well, slightly less grouchy. grouchy. Slightly less, less grouchy. grouchy. A little bit more, you know, a little bit more uh, outgoing. Um, although I do, and honestly, I, I wish that they hadn't killed him off. I yes. wish they hadn't killed him off. But I'll say this. He did go out like a champ. Yes. He did go out like a champ. He did go out, you know, basically giving, uh, yeah. Yeah. He did go out, you know, he did go out giving them, you know, giving them hell. Uh, yes. You know, I, I did. His last words were in Spanish, but I was able to hear. And he was saying something like, don't tell them anything. Um. I would like to know what happened with his leg. Because it is it is hinted at that he, you know, he lost his leg. Yeah. So there's a story you know, behind that. We don't there. get the, yeah, there's a story. Yeah. And unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, um, we're never going to get a chance to hear it, which, which is sad. But yeah, I but... think his death actually probably upset me the most because, you know, you felt like he had so much more to add. But then again, it also cemented the useless killing that this, this well, single mindedness that we're going to go back in time. We're going to do a better job than Hitler. We're going to have a great third Reich and we're going to take over the world. Well, to me, it also underlines the fact because like, um, yeah, Helena does turn around and, yeah. um, you know, it, she does like, at first it looks like she's going to betray Indy, but then, but then she it does turns the out that things. she, yeah, yeah, she does the sneaky thing and, you know, but to me, I think what really, you know, one of the, one of the, the upsides to the scene with Ronaldo is that it shows, you know, Helena kind of gets this little lesson yeah. in, look, this isn't a game, you know, uh, a friend of mine just died. Yeah. You know, this is, we, we are dealing with high stakes here. You know, this isn't a, this isn't a game. This isn't, this isn't, you know, happy fun time. We're not on a, on a fun adventure. I just lost a friend. Yeah. You know, and it would be something interesting, you know, it, I think fits, you know, it helps, it helps for that that turn that kind of turn that she does later and the fact that you know it also i think helps like it would also probably help like if they ever gave helena her own adventures that is something to think about yeah you know which is like oh uh you know it's like yeah this isn't all fun and games uh <laughs> she's the thief with a heart of gold and um 
who secretly wants to look out for people, but at the same time she yeah. wants to get treasures. Um, which I like. I like having those complexities and those facets. Oh yeah. Because those characters are very interesting. I mean, when you look at, it's funny. The characters that are the least interesting are the bad guys. They are the least complex. They are the least um, nuanced. They, they, and, and isn't it true that if you do anything in your obsessed or single mindedness, you get nowhere. And yet we get these wonderful, rich characters in Helena in Indiana in Teddy in all of these characters. They're just beautifully deep and yeah. and um, And, and normal in that, you know, we have emotions, we have feelings, we have off, we don't always do things the right way, we don't always do things for the right reason, which is why that, you know, um, and we always love a good story of somebody who's maybe a little prodigal, and they come back to the phone, and that's Helena. She has made some serious mistakes over the years, and made some serious bad choices over the years. I mean, first of all, do not engage, get engaged to a mobster's son. I don't care how much money you need. Um, <laughs> but it just it, yeah. it made her very enjoyable because you could surprisingly identify with her. Because who hasn't had to, you know, some days you just try and fight to find the rent. And um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, well, I, you just, know, it's like, yeah, I think that's it's... why I smiled so much and enjoyed it so much. Oh, yeah. No, definitely. It's, and it's, it is, it, it's just really funny because it's like, yeah, you know, it's, it's like, yeah, you know, we, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it, it's like, it does, you need to, you need to pay the rent and, uh, you know. So you sell a few gold trinkets you stole out of a tomb. Big whoop. Yeah. I'm kidding. I'm yeah. kidding. Um, yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> well, well, you know, it pays the rent. It keeps the landlord from banging yes. on the door. You know, and then you know, mobster son. Well, you know, he he wants he to write some checks. Get bail out of jail. Get bail yeah. out of jail. You know, somebody. You know, somebody might be. You know, they might not be all that nice and good, but uh, you know, if they they had a checkbook and they were willing to write write up some money in exchange for you know this or that. She's been living hey, off the know. skin of her teeth for most of her life. Yep. And she's managed to do it without personally killing anyone. Oh. I mean, hey, there's major checkpoints right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, it is. But it, it, you do. Um, I just, I don't know. I, I very much kind of want this to be the end. But at the same time, I, you know, the, I, every time we talk about it, I realize, you know, I would love to see some of these characters again. It's just when you oh, have yeah. a good, well-written character and it's played by somebody who flushes it out beautifully, you want to see it again. I think that's what it always ends up coming down yes. to. So, you know, we've yes. defeated no, the Nazis definitely. again. Um, I'd like to see her. Now let's go to the 70s. Let's see what she does in the 70s. Oh. Um, you know, she could have a lot of fun in the 70s. You know, Teddy grows up, you know, and... and yep. um, I do though. I do though have one request. Yes. Which is, we go to the seventies. I do not want, like, I do not want there to be a scene in a freaking disco. Okay, we don't need that. That's like impossible. We don't need that. In the nineteen seventies, you couldn't walk down the street without walking into a disco. Come on. Oh lord. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. But yes, All right. it well, probably hey, you know doesn't fit in archaeology. It just doesn't fit. But yep. I, I just, you know, it's a shame we had the characters killed off that we did, because yep. I'd like to see more, and yep. I'd like to see, you know, the further adventures of any of these characters. But you know, the ending sequence of them going to the past and being in ancient Greece was so satisfying. Because when Indiana Jones first started saying Continental Drift, I was like, okay, but is he being serious? Or And when it takes you a moment to realize that those boats are clearly not modern-day Germany and the Allies. Clearly not. Um, yeah. You then have to wonder, 
Um, so what is this? You know, what, where are we? And it took a second. And I like that because it made me doubt it for just a moment. And then we meet Archimedes. Who yep. wouldn't want to meet Archimedes? Come on. Yep. Although, you know, there is a part of me that kind of wished that they would have kept Archimedes as like a surprise. Like, you know, don't, you know, having all that stuff, you know, showing right. him in his that, workshop. That, that is set all up with him. Yeah, that would have been, it would have been cool if it's just there in the battle. And then, you know, you know, or like, you know, sitting out there. Yes, and but I think that they kind of had to make sure that audiences knew who it was before Indiana Jones said it. I agree with you. Sometimes setups are too lengthy and kind of kill surprises. And I, yeah. I, I, I agree with that, but I also understand where not everyone would get understand would not fathom it um yeah. so it's um, kind of a catch-22 situation to be in when you think yeah. about it. although although here's the thing at least his appearance was you know the ending if anybody was paying attention yeah was telegraphed because remember that he did find the watch yep in archimedes's tomb so it's like so it's like even if he didn't you know even yes. if he didn't realize it like you know offhand it's like yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> they're kind of messing up their, uh, they're messing up their, uh, their calculations yes. here. Yeah, they're not realizing they're they're kind of going the wrong, you know, they're going the wrong way. Yes. Yeah. And I but and I like was... that because you know they also died senselessly. It couldn't happen to better people, but um, yeah, when, when no. they crash and mm -hmm. and burn. It's like, you know, stupid things result with yeah. stupid results. Yeah, play and stupid games win, as, as my as my little sister would so lovingly say it, play stupid games win stupid prizes. Yes. Um, not to mention the fact that, like, the other thing, you know, the other thing for me is just, uh, this was pointed out because, like, I read, you know, I'm one of those, I read IMDb. Mm -hmm. Um this is actually the first time in an Indiana Jones film the villain is not undone by the object they're seeking. Like, not directly you real, in this case. Not You're directly, right. yeah. I mean, you know, because like, if you look at it, okay, Raiders. Uh, yep. Belloc the and the Nazis open the, yeah, opens the Ark and then the little angels come out and yep. ah, melt, melt, melt. Uh, you know, Temple of Doom, Mularam is holding on to one of the stones. And, you know, Indy does the whole thing of, you know, you betrayed Kali and the thing, thing yeah. you know, heats up. Molar it causes Mularam to fall. And, yeah, he gets eaten by the crocodiles. I mean, okay, the crocodiles are the one that finish him off, but it was the fact that he was holding on to the yes. Sankara stone when it erupted in flames and fell. Um, Same with the chalice in Last La Crusade. Last Crusade, you know, last crusade, right. you know to, to use the quote, he chose poorly. poorly. Uh, you know, which, dang it, if that's not, if that is not um, one of the greatest so quotes in the world. Oh, oh, yeah. I need to remember to so use good. that in my everyday and life. So, and so subtle, too. Yes. Yeah. But this one, admit, it, this just, yeah. it was yeah. very different. You know, because yeah. they were in the past and they were getting shot yep. at um, with these giant arrows, which makes yep. sense when when you think about it. Um, of course, they would bring it down because sharp objects at a flying vessel will not end well. But yeah. so inadvertently, well, because and, they're and... sent to the past and they're unprepared for the past, um, it has put them in a predicament that naturally they crash land and and die. Um, yep. Couldn't happen to a better set of bad guys. Um, yeah, no, we're, we're in in that we are in agreement. Um, yes, this was definitely yeah. But then it becomes this really interesting, you know, um, hoping that that somehow Indiana Jones would find a way to get back home because I agree with you that him staying behind with Archimedes. Although it sounded kind of cool for half a moment, you even thought, oh, that would be nice. And then you thought, no, it wouldn't be. No, that's the wrong ending. Actually, no. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly. just for half a moment for him being 
shall we say, stuck in a time period that he loves and has studied, I can understand the attraction, but it would have been wrong. On so yeah. many levels, from no, time yeah, travel it, to everything else, it would have just been wrong. Yeah, it just it would not have felt right for the character to to end no. his days in uh, in that time no. period. He needed to come back home and face his own fears, which included Marion. Yep. And that brought and, you know, us and it to feels, where we yeah, ended. It feels right for the character yeah. to reunite with his lady love and be able to have a happy ending. Than to just basically be like, I'm gonna, you know, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna be Archimedes's roommate, you know? Yeah. Excuse it, me, it, excuse me, indeed. In, I understand in the is why most <laughs> yeah. historians and archaeologists, yeah. there's that attractiveness of being stuck in the time period that you studied the most. Yeah. But at the same time, there's a difference between studying and understanding and living. And Let's just be honest. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm going to be the first to say indoor plumbing, uh -huh, air conditioning, yep. yes. and the right to vote. Guess what? I'm going to stay in There you go. So, there you go. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not to mention, you know, not to mention the fact that, you know, we also now have like internet. Uh, oh, yes. You know, nice DoorDash. Uh, I know. <laughs> it's like, it's like it's I'm like, terribly there sorry. There are a lot but of things. Yeah. I'll study the past. I will. Yeah go into depth on the past yep but i don't want to live it because i know what it was like well enough that i know yeah. i don't want yeah. to live it yeah because it's very as, different it is not the same yep. as studying it yeah yep. um and it's just you know we learned that in yep. another one of spielberg's franchises in jurassic park it's just like it's great to study them it's great to understand them but living with them living with real dinosaurs doesn't work out guess what yeah no that is that is absolutely true or you know back to the future it's like yeah it's uh -huh. great to think you could time travel back there but you know you kind of you kind of need to also you know have respect for the fact that it's not going to be you know there's going to be so yeah. many things different you know there's going to be so many challenges i mean you know it's yeah it's just not the same no, definitely thing. definitely i mean you know it's that is that is absolutely true. It is. Yeah, you know, I think we got a yeah. much more satisfying ending to this story. Yes. yes. With what they definitely. gave us, and so I appreciate oh, yeah, what no, they did. Def definitely, definitely. I mean, if this is if this is the last hurrah for like this world, yeah, that that we're in, you know, it's Indy done well. Everybody, yeah, no, it's like I'm happy. Um, yeah. You know, we can we can leave this just like this. It's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm good, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, we don't have to have, uh, you know, again, yeah, we don't have to have Harrison Ford in a wheelchair, you know, like, you right. know, putting on like a little seatbelt, and then throwing the whip and, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, using that to, to <laughs> swing across. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah. Indiana yeah. Jones can no, now retire, no, can... happy with Marion, in yep. somewhere and enjoy his books and just live a nice happy remainder of a quiet life yeah i mean that is yeah no I'm, I'm i'm good with indy living the quiet life it's like you know what he's deserved it it's a it's you know so much in in in, in many ways this is the spiritual you know in last crusade we had a literal riding off into the sunset yes this is the spiritual riding off into the sunset yes i agree and i'm i'm good with that it's like yes yes let's let yes. him spiritually right off into the sunset we have what we need you know we have what we need in the sense that yeah he you know we have that last adventure yeah and it is it's a doozy and a doozy. it is good enough yeah. it's a doozy but it's but it's a good enough doozy yeah if that makes any sense you know and then hopefully you know we will get you know hope you know Hopefully, maybe we'll get somebody else, uh, you know. Maybe some the... side stories and some other things. I yeah. think they could have some fun with that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But we don't We don't need, you know, we, we, we don't. We, it would be fun. We don't need it. We want it. Right. But, you know, I'm okay if this is truly the end. Yeah. It's like, okay, no, we're good. We're good. Totally agree. We're good. We're good. And now I think, I'm just going to um, watch them all over again. 
yeah see that's the thing we got streaming we got dvd and yes. blu-ray and you know we got downloading the digital copy we got lots of ways to code. watch this yeah. and exactly it's just yeah, fine. No, yeah yeah exactly exactly so i mean we have you know we're we are good yep we are good it's okay it, it is okay we can you know we can say we can say goodbye to indie and this yes. world and not feel like we're you know like we're missing something um yeah no and i think anything else that you want to add to this conversation or nope i think i think we, we covered yeah. it um if you yeah. if you haven't seen it you probably shouldn't have listened but um yeah. you know i i think that it i'm so glad that i got to see it in the movie theaters because i don't get out to the movies as often this one was very enjoyable in the movie theaters and i look forward to the day it's on disney plus because then i'm going to watch it all over again yes yes <laughs> and the good news with disney plus is you know if you have to take a if you have to take a break <laughs> of a certain nature you know you can just pause and you know come back yep. you don't have to worry about like it is what's run, nice about that disney. yep yep i gotta run i gotta do this you know i gotta make sure that uh, <laughs> you know i get back into what if i miss, don't miss I anything miss? important yep <laughs> it's like oh vicky you went to the bathroom and you missed this awesome i missed, you missed everything this awesome part. yeah yeah. You missed this awesome part. You know, you missed the you missed the cameo <laughs> by a CGI Sean Connery. You know, or CGI Sean Connery telling Indy, Indiana, let it go. <laughs> oh Lordy. I think on, I think I think on, on that, that note. note <laughs> yeah, it is. You know, this isn't the end of uh this is definitely not the end of Marku 42, but this is the end of this episode. Yeah, this is the end of this episode. Uh, but you know what? We will be back next time. You know, so we're we're still going on. We're still going on. We haven't we haven't reached the age yet where it would be ridiculous if we were, you know, <laughs> figuratively swinging with uh, you know, using a whip to swing from uh, the rafters <laughs> or chase after Nazis with time machines and time machines and the cup of Christ and spears that may or may not be the real thing. <laughs> you know, I wonder, because it showed that his bedside has the the fake spear. I wonder mm. if he uses that as a back scratcher. Oh you know, I think I think we found I think we found the next uh I think we found the next item that should be on sale at uh, at like uh, the Disney store in in Disneyland. The Spear of Destiny. The spear, yeah the the Spear of Longinus or whatever the La Lance yes. of Longinus or whatever it's called. Yeah, just you know Lance of Longinus back scratchers. You know you grab it, you you know scratch yourself in the back. You know. Oh, Come on, no, you know no, that would no, fly no, off the no, shelves. No, no. You know that yeah, would probably. fly off the shelves. It would, it would. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'd go on eBay. It's like you know, Indiana Jones and the you know the Temple no. of the Forbidden Eye. You know, no. Spear of Longinus no. back scratcher. Fifty dollars. <laughs> buy it now. <laughs> oh, okay. Now on that note. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Mark Crew 42's Universe featuring Mark Baumgarten, Eduardo M. Fryer, Vicky Chakabowski, and Zion Kuros. This show was produced and directed by Mark Baumgarten. If you'd like to get in touch with us, go to our Facebook page or email us at markcrew42s.universe at gmail.com. Our radio show airs weekly on Subspace Radio Network at www. Dot subspace dot radio and an iHeartRadio. You can listen to our old shows at our website, marku42.com, and many podcast platforms such as iTunes, Audible, and Pandora. And if you want to hear shows dating back to 2012 with over 150 celebrity interviews, try our YouTube page, Marku42. Marku42's Universe, copyrighted 2023.